last week during a golf lesson, my instructor explained, if you want to hit the ball pure, meaning squarely in the center of the club face, everything in physics must align. And that's when you get the best possible results. Just like in golf, to get complete root coverage in a soft tissue grafting procedure, everything has to square up from patient-related factors to choice and execution of surgery. Only when all these pieces are in sync, we can expect the best possible outcome. There are many factors that influence the outcome of connective tissue grafting procedure. For the sake of convenience, let's split them into patient-related factors and surgeon-related factors. In terms of patient-related factors, evaluation of the site prior to the surgical procedure is of utmost importance. What matters is the size, which is the width and the depth of the recession defect and the number of recession defects, because that determines what type of surgery or flap you're going to do. The next comes quality and quantity of the host tissue, amount of keratinized tissue and the soft tissue biotime. Is there enough retinous tissue? Is the soft tissue thick or thin? The next comes in the assessment is the width and height of the interdental papillae. Presence of interdental papillae is a significant predictor in the outcome. The best results are usually achieved in RT1, where there is no interproximal bone loss, and there is adequate correct nice tissue, and the patient has a thick biotype, both for the tissue and the bone. Well, if the bone support is not there, in case it is Kero RT2 or RT3, you're not going to be able to achieve root coverage. Adding regenerative techniques are recommended in these situations. So always set the patient expectations right right at the start of conversation. Now, the next thing you need to also look at is the presence of step defect. If there is a step defect, which means if you assess the margin of the enamel right where the recession is present, the surgical phase should precede the restorative phase. And it also complicates the surgical outcome. The other things that you should also assess is are if there is a frenum pull and what is the depth of the vestibule because that's going to change following the surgery. Now, these variables are not under our control, but we need to make a note of them as they help us in planning the procedure. So what is our, under our control is the surgical related factors. The first thing that comes to our mind is how do we select the type of surgical procedure we are going to do? So in this case scenario, first is the choice of flap that we are going to do. Are we going to use a coronary positioned flap, which can include enveloped flap, trapezoidal flap with verticals, or you can use Zucchelli technique, Versus you can use a VISTA technique or a pinhole technique, a tunnel technique, or sometimes minimally invasive technique as used by Autoler. My recommendation would be to do what works in your hands. What you need to assess before you're going to raise a flap is whether or not there is adequate correctness tissue. So if a patient has adequate correctness tissue, and has a thick biotype, any type of flap would work. You can use a coronally advanced flap. You can even use a double papilla flap, or you can use a pinhole technique. If the tissue biotype in the presence of adequate retinized tissue is thin, then you are limited by either coronally advanced flap or uh, a tunnel technique along with the CTG. Now, what happens when there is inadequate correctness tissue? 
there are two situations that can be present. One is there is a thick biotype, but there is insufficient retinitis tissue. In those cases, you can use, again, coronary advanced flap, double papilla flap, laterally positioned flap, along with CTG. And you can combine that with amdogain or alloderm. And sometimes even you do a GTR procedure. But what is the most complicated situation is when you have inadequate retinitis tissue and a thin biotype. In those case scenario, the choice of surgery is difficult. And maybe you end up having uh, doing a free gingival graft, or maybe you end up doing a tunnel along with the a connective tissue graft. So you see there are so many variables. The next thing comes into picture is the execution of the surgical technique. So before executing surgery, you must remove the cause. So if it's a malposition tooth, if it's a restoration defect, if regeneration is desired, or if there is inflammation present, that should be eliminated. Now, the next thing is choice of allograft versus an autograft. If there are more than two or adjacent teeth that have recession defect, allograft would be a better choice because uh, there is only so much tissue that you have in the mouth. The next thing in terms of a surgical technique is a traumatic handling of the fat flap. You must do least trauma and always try to maintain the dual blood supply from the flap. The one thing you need to understand is the short dissection is the best. The moment you start tearing the tissue or do the blunt dissection, there will be clot retraction, there will be retraction of the tissue and fibrosis, and you will not be able to achieve the results you want. If you have a tension in the flap at closure or the recipient site preparation is not great, that can lead to neck or even failure. And if you have a perforation, there's a high chance you will have a graft failure. Now, also remember, don't cut when it's not needed. There are some tissues that are going to hold your graft in place. Prepare the tooth surface. Make sure it's clean and it's flat before you do a surgery or even during the surgery. In terms of graft harvesting, the size, thickness, and quality of tissue retrieved is key because nutrient diffusion can only go so far. You should also be fast. The longer the tissue is out of the mouth, the more cells will die, less the regeneration. And stable suturing is key in preventing micromotion, which is also one of the important factors for successful healing and revascularization, because that will be important for regeneration of the tissue and ultimately lead to proper coverage of the root.